Hi, welcome to this video of IBM Spectrum Protect Plus version 10.1.6 and the new ability to backup and restore Windows file systems. In this video, I'm going to show you how you set up the backups, including the SLAs and the exclude statements. And then I'll show you how you go through the help desk file system recovery. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Let's start off by looking at the service level agreements. We're going to go into manage protection, policy overview. If you scroll down and take a look at the bronze policy, if you click on it, you'll see that currently it is set up to retain the backups for three days, to take a backup every six hours, that's the frequency, and then we've set the start time and the target vSnap. Now one thing to note is that the file system protection uses the same SLAs as would a database backup, application backup, or a Office 365 backup. You can set up things like the replication to a second vSnap. You can do additional copies to S3 or a repository server, and you even can add in policies to archive out to tape. You can use one of these existing SLAs, or if you wanted to, you could create your own just for the file server backups. Okay, let's go ahead and switch over and add in file servers. In order to do a file system backup of either a virtual or physical file server, first go to Manage Protection, and then into File Systems, and then click on Microsoft Windows. Now we've already defined one file server, and I'm gonna show you how you would add another. You're gonna click on Manage File Servers, and then choose the Add File Server button. You'll need the host address, and then if you want, you can use an existing user that you've already saved to Spectrum Protect Plus, and this would be a good idea if you are using Active Directory, and you're gonna use the same user for all the different file servers that you're going to back up. Or you can go ahead and enter a user ID. Now this user ID does not have to be administrator, you will need to check the documentation and verify it meets all of the permission requirements. You'll enter the password, and then you'll choose the max parallel file systems. Now by default, this is set up to 10. And what this does is it's the number of max parallel mounts of the vSnap, and we'll do a mount of the vSnap for each file system. So if you only have four file systems, then we'll actually only do four mounts, and then we'd be doing four parallel backups, each of an individual file system. And then once you were done entering the information, you would go ahead and click Save. Once you click Save, the file server will be registered and an agent will be pushed out to that file server. An inventory will then run and discover all the file systems. Now do note that you cannot have a Spectrum Protect Plus file server backup agent on the same server as, for instance, a Spectrum Protect Plus application backup agent. You can also force a manual inventory or run a test on the connections. If you go into Actions and then click on Test, this will check if all of the required permissions and settings are correct. Now the inventory also does this, but then in addition, it'll, it'll actually run the inventory of the file systems. You can create a exclude list for the files or directories you do not want to back up. In order to do a exclude, you'll want to click on the file server and then choose select options. We've prepared three exclude rules. Now the exclusion rules are processed on a top-down basis. The first rule is for file exclusions and it reads wildcard colon backslash dot 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 backslash exclude underscore this underscore file and then another wildcard. And so this will exclude any files that have as part of its name exclude underscore this underscore file. The second is a exclusion pattern for directories. 
And this reads dir space wildcard colon backslash exclude underscore this underscore dir. And the third command is for entire file systems, and that starts with an fs, and then we put the specific drive, in this case, the s drive. You can go ahead and click Save. And since we created these exclusion rules at the file server level, they will be inherited by the individual file systems. If you're backing up the C drive with the operating system files, we will exclude all the files that are locked by the operating system. What we're doing is not a bare machine recovery backup. If you click on the file server, that will expand it so you can see the file systems. And if you choose one or more of the file systems with the select option, you'll see that it has inherited the exclude rules that we just created for the file server. And so you can make any changes you want for this individual file system. And in fact, you can delete all of the rules if you want for that file system. And so when you click save, those new set of rules will apply only to this one file system. Next, we're going to assign a SLA to these file systems. If you had an NFS or GPFS file system, those would show up, but we would gray them out because we don't support backing them up. So choose the file systems you want to assign to an SLA. Click on Select SLA Policy. Now go ahead and select an SLA. In this case, we're going to choose the Bronze SLA and then choose Save. Because we've already been running backups on this SLA policy, you can see the previous backups that we've taken. If you don't want to wait for the scheduled backup, you can go into Actions and click Start. And this is going to start an on-demand backup of all of the file servers or applications that belong to, in this case, the Bronze SLA. So we had three file systems assigned. In fact, that's all that's in this SLA. So we'll kick off a backup of those. If we go into the jobs and operations and then go into the progress bar, we can get an overview of the backup of those three file systems. Now, the first time a backup is done, it is a full backup, and then all additional backups are gonna be incremental forever. So when the backup starts, there is going to be a SIFS mount of a share from the vSnap, and that's going to be mounted on the file system. The first time we do this backup, a database is going to be created that holds all of the meta information. The backups are at a file level, and we do go through and scan the file systems looking at the meta information of each of the files. We're also looking to see if the file has been deleted since the last backup. In that case, we would expire it off of the backups. Any of the new or changed files we find are also going to be copied into that same share. Now, when the backup finishes, all of the changed or new files, as well as any new data and the database are residing in that share. And Spectrum Protect Plus will then take a snapshot of that share and save that as a point in time backup so that all of the meta information and the files are together in a consistent snapshot that then becomes a recovery point. Now, the next time we do an incremental backup, we're going to take that same share and mount it to the file system, and we're going to update that database with the new metadata entries as well as adding in any new or change files to that share. And then at the end of it, we'll take another snapshot and continue with that process. When it comes to a restore, we'll mount that point in time snapshot, we'll access the database, and then we'll be able to show the user which files and directories they can restore to that file system. Okay, you can see our backup has just finished and all three file system backups were successful. If you wanna do an ad hoc backup of a single file system, go into Windows Backup, Click Create Job, choose Ad Hoc Backup, and click on Select. You'll choose the SLA policy, in this case, Bronze. And now you can see the file systems and applications that belong to the Bronze SLA. In our case, it's just the backup of the three file systems. So we're going to choose 
one of these file systems and you'll see it show up on the right hand side. Click next, you'll see the summary and then click submit. And this will kick off a ad hoc backup of just a single file system. If you go back into jobs and operations, into the running jobs and click on the progress tab, you'll see we're doing the incremental forever backup of that particular file system. To do a restore, you'll also go into Microsoft Windows and click on Create Job. But this time you'll choose the Snapshot Restore and then click Select. Now the restore is going to be a two-step help desk-like restore. So for step one, you'll see all the file servers that we backed up. If you click on that, you'll see the file systems. You can select one file system. And so once you select that, you'll see it show up on the right hand side. You'll go ahead and click next. You'll now see all the recovery points for this file system. And remember, these were the snapshots we took after each of the backups. You'll choose one of these snapshots. Go ahead and click next. On the advanced option, you have the choice to run a cleanup. And this has to do with the two step restore that we're doing. If there was a failure, for instance, in the mounting of the share, then it would clean up after that failure and not leave that share out there. So I suggest you leave that checked. Go ahead and click Next. You're going to review this information and then click Submit. Now please note this pop-up that appears. This pop-up basically states that the mount will be done on a file server and then the restore agent will be informed that the restore can start. At that point, you can go to the restore interface and select the items to restore. After we click OK, we're going to start the second portion of the restore. So now you'll go to Jobs and Operations, click on Active Resources and File Systems. You're going to click on the File System. This is then going to open a new tab. So this new tab is our restore interface. And if you click on the file system, you can then browse via the meta database the file system and all the files that we backed up. You can select either full directories, you can select single files, and all the items that you select will be put onto the right-hand side restore list. Now you can specify an alternate restore location, and to do that you will need to enter a fully qualified path. And then you'll go ahead and click Restore. Now once the Restore is finished, go ahead and click Sign Out. If we take a look at the files and directories that we just restored, you'll see that if the file already existed, then the new copy that we restore, we restore it with the same name, but then we append the last change date to the end of that. When it comes to directories, if directories already exist, we just go ahead and restore the files into those directories. And if those files exist, then we once again will restore that file with the last change date appended. So in summary, I've showed you how Spectrum Protect Plus can now do backups and restores of your Windows file systems. Thank you very much.